it's Ashley and I'm back I'm back with another video and uh, we're gonna be doing a reaction to watch mojo and it's their top 10 scariest food urban legends and when I think about it the only one I can think of if you've seen, well, I don't know when that video is going up, but there's a mention of you chew gum and it lasts in your system. It stays in your system for like seven or 10 years. And if you eat, well, I don't know if it's an urban legend. If you eat too many apple seeds, they have cyanide in them and you could possibly die. And the same thing with almonds. Those are like the only ones I can think of offhand. Um, and if you didn't notice, I ha dyed my hair, all the parts where I was blonde, you can see where the color is really popping at, which when my cousin originally did it, it was towards the front of my head for them dimensions, you know, anyways, <laughs> if you're interested in finding out what these top 10 scariest urban food legends are. Keep watching. People love a good story, but what if they're not true? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 scariest food urban legends. For this list, we're looking at various urban legends surrounding food that have either become common belief or that made national headlines. Number 10, chewing gum stays in your stomach. Hey, I got one. Chewing gum or it'll stay in your stomach for seven years. You undoubtedly heard this old wives' tale as a child, and maybe it's stuck with you ever since. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. So long as it's gum, then that's for me. Violet, right, now don't you do anything stupid. Well, you can shed that mental burden because this urban legend is 100% false. Yes, many of the ingredients are technically indigestible, which means your body cannot break down the components. This gum has no flavor. If you don't like it, just spit it out. Just spit it out. Don't, we wouldn't be insulted if you just spit it out. But that's not the same as the wad of chewed gum will physically sit inside of your stomach for seven years. It comes oh. out just like any other food stuff. So oh, so you, you swallow it, you pooping it out that day or the next? You worked up about it. You do believe me, don't you, Dad? Number nine, flesh-eating bananas from Costa Rica. Back in the dark ages of the internet, Ugh. I haven't heard that, and it sounds ter that is pretty scary. I was gonna say terrifying. Internet, also known as late 1999 and early 2000, an email from the so-called Mannheim Research Institute warned of imported Costa Rican bananas that were infected with a bacteria called necrotizing fasciitis. Banana. It probably only happens uh, to skin and not actual know. food. Yeah. Can't be attached Banana. to food. Banana. 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 This is a grisly flesh-eating disease that essentially eats away at the body's soft tissue. What happened to Phil? Necrotizing fasciitis? Caused by an invasive streptococcus? Streptococcus! <laughs> flesh-eating disorder. Apparently, apparently, the disease had grafted itself to the banana peels, and 15,000 Americans were expected to become infected. Oh. Of course, this was nothing more than a malicious internet hoax, which was updated in 2011 with bananas of African origin. And the story was filled to the brim with scientific and biological inaccuracies. All right, everyone, quick. Here you go. What's this? You all need to eat your banana immediately. What the hell for? Eat the banana. We have to put you down. Number eight, tapeworm in Welch's. Rest day? Never heard that. I'll tear some Welch's up. Rest days. Do you believe everything you read on Facebook? Back in September Sometimes. 2018, <laughs> I used to. named Courtney Sassanak claimed to find a tapeworm inside a Welch's fruit snack. Welch's responded to the viral post, explaining that the tapeworm was likely nothing more than excess product drizzled on the exterior. We've had this conversation. She was given B12. She didn't get better because someone else ate it. Sassanak apparently went to her local doctor's lab and had the snack tested. And they deduced it was indeed a dehydrated tapeworm. They determined that you have a tapeworm. What? That's a lie. A she was about to get paid. Welch's fruit snacks for life. sent the snack to Welch's for inspection as per their request. However, Welch's parent company stated that they had never received the snack, nor had they received documentation proving that a lab test had occurred, meaning this claim is still currently unproven. She went too far. I mean, those snacks are delicious.
proven. Number seven, biscuit-induced coma. Back in June 2013, you may have heard about food writer Kevin Shalin, also known as the Mighty Rib. The story goes nope, that Shalin was trying to beat a restaurant record by eating hundreds of cheddar bait biscuits from mm. Red Lobster. After I mean, he picked the best biscuits to do biscuits, it. Shalin started convulsing and slipped into a butter-induced coma. Apparently, the butter had, quote, blocked signals coming from Shalin's brain, and doctors that were just forced sounds to drain stupid. two gallons of butter from Shalin's body. The story originated on the satirical website Rock City Times, but was picked up and circulated as real news by the likes of the Daily Mirror and Canada's The Globe and Mail. Yeah, these publications actually fell for a satirical news article. This is a Cheddar Bay Biscuit Toast. You gotta go like this. One, two, three. Number six, the Wendy's Finger. Chili's and chilies. You look that I think I heard about that one. Yes! Let me get my boots, we'll go to Wendy's. Back in 2005, a woman by the name of Anna Ayala allegedly found a severed human finger in her bowl of Wendy's chili and subsequently filed a lawsuit. Oh, I'm lying. That was about a place here in Ohio uh, at a local Red Robin. Somebody had a finger in their burger and it turned out to be true. I don't remember all the things about it, but I remember finding out it was true and being disgusted. First, I wasn't sure what it was. And uh, as we started investigating, poking it, other people too, that's when we find that there's something that looks like a nail. This story was everywhere, and the allegations cost Wendy's over $21 million in lost Damn. revenue and lots of public goodwill. An investigation was Wendy's quickly the best launched by the Santa Clara County Medical Examiner's Office, who deduced that the severed finger did not come from a Wendy's restaurant or its supplier. Her story <laughs> One of her family cut their finger off and threw it in there. With the fast food chain was missing a digit, and then when Ayala dropped her plans to sue the fast food chain. It was later discovered that the finger had belonged to a friend of Ayala's husband, who had lost it in a work accident. Ayala was sentenced to nine years in state prison, and her husband was sentenced to 12 for supplying the finger. See? Girl, lying. You lying. <sighs> she went to jail. Maybe one, I wonder if that was around the time that person had that finger incident. Hmm. She was trying to get off on it. Getting some money from that too. Nine years. Nine years. They said they lost how much in revenue? So yeah, they probably, the law to the full extent against her. <laughs> Number five, poisoned Halloween candy. You oh, know yeah. heard stories of psychos poisoning Razor Halloween blades. candy, and so have your parents. But according to most sources, reports of genuine Halloween poisonings are hard to come by. Sounds like something a stranger would say. Well, I say it too. In fact, there have been zero confirmed cases of children dying to this day. Mm. At least, not from random strangers. <laughs> Michael Myers. There have been reports of children being poisoned by Halloween candy or injured by sharp objects in it, but all had explanations and none could be traced to random happenstance. Hmm. Some were intentional poisonings from family members, as horrible as that is. Wow. Concerned. Some were pure accidents, and some deaths were mistakenly attributed to the candy. Number four, virus tainted Cadbury products. Stories of people contaminating Never food heard of with HIV-positive blood have been circulating for many years. Oh. We have tested positive for HIV, uh, which is the virus that causes AIDS. Yet another story popped up in 2018, <laughs> claiming that a Cadbury employee had, quote, added his HIV-infected blood to the products. However, there was absolutely no truth to the story. There were no documented arrests, no issued warnings, and no investigations whatsoever. Who are these people that come out with these outlandishly disturbing stories of, like, somebody putting AIDS tainted, tainted blood in anything the general public digests? That's like the same thing, like, with Bear, when they actually were tampering with the medicine. Or, um... The thing with the needles on gas pumps that are infected with HIV and AIDS. It's very disturbing. People are crazy, man. However, in other words, it was pure internet bakery. Further, 
So Cadbury verifies the post is false. And they say if you have any questions for the company, call their customer service line at 855-535-5648. And even if the story were true, victims would likely not be infected with HIV, as the virus cannot survive for long outside the host. Yes, eating or drinking someone's blood would be horrifying, there's no doubt about that. But you wouldn't become infected. Number three. Mutant KFC chickens. <laughs> this is the best Kentucky Fried Chicken I ever had. Stories have been circulating about mutant KFC chickens for years since Kentucky Fried Chicken officially changed their name to KFC. According to the urban legend, this is because the company could not legally use the word chicken in their name. I was gonna make that baked meaty you guys like so much, but I just forgot about the time, and then before you know it, oh my god, it's five o'clock. It's fine. It's great. I love KFC. The supposed reason they couldn't do so was because they were actually raising genetically modified mutant chickens wow. that bore little resemblance to a natural animal. I'm sorry, this has expired. You son of a... Uh-oh. <laughs> However, KFC actually changed their name for other logistical reasons. They don't own the farms the chickens are raised on, and the word chicken is still used in their product descriptions. Like KFC themselves have stated, wow. no mutated chickens are involved chicken, hot in air balloons. a delicious fried chicken. It's honestly finger looking good. Number two. Oh, what the heck is that? Celebrated art career, a cheap studio, a happy career making accident, and a Squarespace online store to sell the must have gift of the hub. Number two, cockroach eggs in plastic straws. In 2010, a bizarre Oof, email was circulated me the shivers. That that's plastic straws were filled disgusting. with cockroach eggs. The email begins with, quote, I ordered a club sandwich and a Sprite in a restaurant oh somewhere, bitch. which immediately throws the story's veracity into question. After allegedly finding 1,000 cockroach eggs in their plastic straw, the storyteller found straw eggs, quote, in almost all the restaurants and fast food chains that they had gone to. That's true. a fucking lie. And you need to hear the truth, okay? <laughs> it certainly makes for a disgusting story considering how much of humanity is repulsed by cockroaches and our collective fear of contaminated food very few insects are more detested than the cockroach even the worst Just blow up wherever that is. hey you cockroach get out of here but the story doesn't make a lick of sense fortunately with many of its supposed details including the years of when it happened versus when it was reported and how cockroaches actually lay eggs being incorrect so how many of those did you believe at one point? I definitely thought the KFC one was true. Although I did once find a feather on a piece of chicken, so I guess that's almost a good sign because at least it's actually a chicken. Real chicken. Anyway, there's one iconic myth we've probably all been hearing about since we were kids. So let's look at some honorable or dishonorable mentions and then we'll see our scariest food urban legend. Tim Horton's coffee contains nicotine. Don't worry, your morning joe is nicotine free and delicious. It's nice and simple. I never had Tim Hortons. Let me know what you think. It's good. This is by far one of the best coffee I've tasted. Bubble Yum contains spider eggs. No spiders were no. harmed in the blowing of this bubble. Is that Leo? It is Leonardo DiCaprio. Earthworms are used as filler in McDonald's burgers. Ew, it's beef, not worms. The savory, the sizzle, unexpected flavors. Maybe back then, now? <laughs> Kidding. At McDonald's. Deep fried rat headed Popeyes. It was probably just organ meat. I remember the health that. inspection found no evidence of vermin. Now, what is that? What's that? Right. Crazy. Grade D but edible meat. There is no such thing as a grade D but edible grade classification. D. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe I'm to our right channel now. That looks and delicious. ring the bell to get notified about our latest Maybe videos. A little you bit have more. the option to be notified Medium. for occasional <laughs> videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and. Wow. Hmm. How many of those? I've heard. About half of them. I heard about a half, about half of them. The one that was most disturbing was the roach egg one because roaches are disgusting. Um, my mom and dad used to tell me that I would eat spider eggs because I used to, when I was little, I'd chew gum and then I would just save it. 
I'd like put it on my nightstand or on my headboard and then get ready for school or whatever, finish getting ready and then get my gum. Like I put my clothes on and like get my ABC gum, already been chewed gum was like the final touch to my outfit. And my mom's like, that's disgusting. Do you know like bugs and stuff crawl around, spiders, they're gonna get in your gum and you're gonna be chewing them up. It didn't stop me. I still continued to get ABC gum or you did ABC gum. I don't even know why, like I got gum whenever I wanted, but I don't know. Things kids do, you know? Anyways, uh, which one of these was the most disturbing to you? Uh, how many of these had you already heard of? Um, don't forget to rate, comment, I'm like rate. Don't forget to leave a like, uh, drop a comment below, subscribe, hit the notification bell while you're at it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.